All right, the day is here. We have press conferences. We have official announcements. Four new schools have been added to the Big 12. And now one of the major questions remaining is, does this league remain a Power 5 autonomous league? We're going to answer that question here in this video. And if you have not subscribed, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I am John Kurtz. On this channel, I talk college football every single day. Right now, that means conference realignment every single day. I aim to give the Big 12 a voice. So in order to tackle this question, will the Big 12 remain a Power 5 conference? I'm going to use some of the framework of a piece that Dennis Dodd wrote in CBS Sports or for CBS Sports because I think it, it does a good job of hitting at some of the key points here that need to be addressed. And believe me, we're going to get to everybody's favorite, Stuart Mandel, and some of his arguments against the Big 12 being at least as competitive as the Pac-12 and the ACC. But let's start with this. So Dennis Dodd says, with the NCAA about to rewrite its constitution, there is question whether the Big 12 retains the autonomy designation. More important, whether the league remains a power conference as it comes to playoff access. From a source in his article, quote, there's a qualitative fan viewpoint. Do they play adequate football, said an advisor to the Big 12 expansion process. Do they earn that? I think the answer is yes. So the source is saying, I think the answer is yes, and the answer better be yes. It should be yes. If we're talking about playing a quality of football, a caliber of football high enough to retain Power 5 status, the Big 12 absolutely does with these four new schools. For instance, future Big 12 members have placed more teams in the final AP Top 25 rankings than the Pac-12 in four straight seasons. More Top 25 teams the last four seasons for the new-look Big 12 than the Pac-12. It has also topped the ACC in each of the past three. So again, the ACC incredibly top-heavy with Clemson and then not much else right now. Last year was particularly good for the Big 12. The league had Cincinnati at 8, Iowa State at 9, BYU at 11, and Oklahoma State at 20. And then USC was the only Pac-12 school to finish in the top 25. Now I get that that's just one year, cherry-picking a little bit there, but we also have that evidence from the AP Top 25 over the last four years that that's been apparent. And we can also dive into some computer rankings here that would also back up this claim that the Big 12 plays a high enough caliber of football. According to Sagarin rankings, okay, one of the more widely respected computer rankings in college football, in the Sagarin rankings, the Big 12's average team ranking outperformed the Pac-12 in three of the past five years. The Pac-12 did end up with just a slight edge overall in the past five years, averaging 49, while well, the Big 12 averaged 52. But you can see there, virtually the same. And that's always been the argument here. Not that the Big 12 is definitively better than the Pac-12 or the ACC right now with the new league, but it certainly belongs in the conversation. And it will be neck and neck with those leagues, I believe, on a year-in, year-out basis. If you want to use the S&P Plus rankings, which I particularly like from Bill Connolly at ESPN, very similar. The Big 12 topped the Pac-12 in each of the past three seasons in S&P Plus rankings. But in the big picture, the Pac-12 is just slightly ahead. So you can see this graphic here that Connolly has. The Big 12 ranked less than a point behind the Pac-12 and less than two points behind the ACC, while also ranking well ahead of every conference. So the important distinction here is the AAC ranks six, nearly seven points below the Big 12. So look at that gap. Seven points between the Big 12 and the next conference, less than a point between the Big 12 and the Pac-12. So even if we're starting to look at a larger picture here over a larger period of time, the Big 12 with the new members absolutely is competitive. And this doesn't take into account the growth potential there for the new schools that are coming in. This is utilizing those schools playing group of five schedules, which, yes, I understand can be easier, but also allows you less opportunity for big wins. And more importantly, you're making less money because industry sources now are telling people like Dennis Dodd at CBS Sports that the Big 12 would be paying out at least 20 to $25 million per year per school now. As opposed to the 37 it used to, so yes, a haircut for the existing schools, but that's up from $7 million, for instance, that the schools in the AAC are getting. How much better can you pay your coaches? Can you get a higher caliber of coach? Can you get more facilities, et cetera, et cetera? Those will help, and that power, status, and resource will definitely help the four schools coming in. What can they turn into when they get that resource help? Now let's address one of the weakest arguments out there, and boy, am I excited for this. Look, I, Stuart Mandel, again, I'll say it. I, I respect his work. He's always been nice to me. He's come on the show. He's come on the channel. But, man, I just hate this argument. So it started with Peter Burns of the SEC Network saying, one could argue if the AAC joins forces with what's left of the Big 12, it could have a better football product than the Pac-12. And Stuart Mandel said, you could, or you could look at the last five to ten years recruiting rankings and realize it's not particularly close. Hate that argument. Absolutely hate that argument. And he was challenged on it by somebody saying, hey, on the field results matter more than recruiting rankings. 
And Mandel said, better recruits equals more talent, as evidenced by the league's NFL draft numbers, which equals a better product. Okay, so now we're taking it to the NFL draft. We'll enter American hero Christian Simmons of Night Sports Now. I apologize if that's Simons. I assume it's Simmons, right? Christian Simmons of Night Sports Now. Either way, American hero. And I'm not talking about American Athletic Conference hero, just an American hero in general. He pointed this out on Twitter. 2021 NFL draft picks. 29 for the new Big 12, 28 for the Pac-12. So, yes, if you can tell I'm rolling my eyes, if you can hear the collective Big 12 fan base roll their eyes at all of this, uh, you are hearing correctly because look at that. More NFL draftees from all of these schools coming in. And again, a lot of that from four schools that have not had the Power 5 resources that are going to be elevated now in their recruiting profile, coaches, etc. It's It's ridiculous. It's just a... Fr- if they would acknowledge, if the national media would just acknowledge that this will at least be a conversation, that the Big 12 versus the Pac-12, the Big 12 versus the ACC will be a conversation moving forward, I would not be this outraged and upset, but it's, it's because nobody wants to give the league a chance. Nobody at all. And Mandel, look, it just burns through his tweets that he's a guy based on the West Coast that obviously has a lot of Pac-12 connections right now, and there's some inherent bias there. Well, here there's an inherent bias to fly over country into the Big 12, all right? So, like, that's why this channel exists, to try and take on some of these lazy narratives that are out there. The bottom line is it's time to go prove this bleep out on the field, and I I can't wait until 2023 when the new-look Big 12 can actually start to do that. Now, another piece of the puzzle here, outside of just what quality of football is being played on the field, is retaining the autonomy designation from the NCAA bylaws. So what Dennis Dodd's article says is, The Autonomy 5 designation is in the NCAA bylaws. I don't think that's going to change. That according to a source. And he says, Big 12 sources agree. Commissioner Bob Bowlesby told CBS Sports that his league retaining Power 5 status is not a concern. A Big 12 AD who helped vet the four schools agreed. The newly formed alliance is on board with the Big 12. Commissioners of the Big 10, ACC, and Pac-12 went out of their way to complement the Big 12 last month. So again, kind of further backing up that that's probably not going to change. And if you're sitting here asking, okay, what is this autonomy thing? What does that mean? Well, in 2015, the NCAA voted to allow the schools and the top five conferences to write many of their own rules. So measures like stipends, cost of attendance stipends, that was one of the biggest things, insurance benefit for players, staff sizes, recruiting rules, mandatory hours spent on individual sports. That can all be dictated now by those five conferences. They get the autonomy to do that outside of just the NCAA. One of the real key pieces to this and the Big 12 retaining Power 5 status is going to be a financial piece, and that goes to the college football playoff. So from the article, Group of Five conferences currently split $90 million per year from the college football playoff, which is 22% of the total revenue. The Power 5 gets $66 million each annually. In an expanded playoff, Power 5 leagues are expected to net north of $100 million each just for participating. And, quote, that's the critical question, a Big 12 consultant said. If there is a significant expansion, it's going to mean significant money. And that's a pretty key point. I mean, right now, in the future, I guess you'd look at it like this. You either get 100-plus million for your league, or you have to split 90 million with multiple other leagues. Or right now, it would be get 66 million apiece for your league, or have to split 90 million with multiple other leagues. So there's a valuable financial component here to retaining that Power 5 status. But I, I would think... I would think, again, based on those commissioners' comments at the Alliance press conference, the Big 12 will not have an issue with that. We'll close with one last little jab here, one last little dig. And this, ugh, even in Dennis Dodd's piece, he says, before that decision is made, presumably about the Power 5 designation with the conference, it would have to be considered the Big 12 grabbed an independent and three of the most accomplished group of five schools, BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF. Their total number of what are now called New Year's Six Bowls, Orange, Rose, Fiesta, Cotton, Sugar, and Peach, is 11. Texas and Oklahoma's combined total, 73. You can see the climb the Big 12 is facing to keep its relevance. Like, okay, man. I, I, I get what you're saying there, but let's, let's just take it to the last 12 years, like this decade plus. Since Texas went to that national championship game in 2009 with Mac Brown, Texas has played in exactly one, exactly one New Year's Six Bowl since then. The four schools that are coming in have played in six in the last 12 years. So, yes, there is something to brand and tradition and history, but there's also something to what are you doing now? And Texas has been a perennial disappointment now. These schools generally have not. Certainly UCF has not been. BYU was not last year. Cincinnati is not right now sitting in the top 10, right? So I'm just – there's so much of this out there right now. 
It is, somebody needs to stand up and say something. I'm trying to. I certainly hope you will as well if you're a fan of this channel. Again, please click subscribe if you have not. I would really appreciate it. I talk college football every day on this channel. Right now, that means realignment every day on this channel. I aim to give the Big 12 a voice. Follow me on Twitter, at JL Kurtz. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at John Kurtz Show. And I will talk to you guys soon.